Before we begin, I just want to say, I hope when I'm that age, I look half as good as Clint does. To live to be 88 years old is a huge accomplishment, let alone to still be walking around, lucid, talking, and not just that, this dude's still directing movies and acting in them. And they're good movies. It's it's really remarkable. And I, I got to give the guy credit for having so much passion and so much dedication to his art that he's willing to keep doing it. And, and this is something I've really noticed. The key to kind of living, if not necessarily a long life, but a one in which you're you're a whole person, where like, because um, I, I I find a lot of old people if they retire and then they don't find anything to do with in their retirement, their mental and physical health just rapidly declines. And I find older people, and this is obviously exempting like health specific health issues like strokes or whatever. But older people who are still very intellectually curious, like they, they read, they, they're involved with their church, they do volunteer work, um, they have a hobby like woodworking or gardening or something, those people seem a lot less old or a lot more together than people of that age who don't have that kind of thing. Like uh, my grandfather, who comes from old German Mennonite stock, he he um out, even though he retired like i don't know what like 30 40 years ago now he still had a part-time job he worked 3 days a week for uh he had about an acre of land that he not exactly farmed he mainly grew flowers and um grapes and pumpkins and vegetables and stuff and he had a wood stove and he would go and chop wood. And he did that up until he was like basically 87. And he's he's finally backed off a bit on that. But like I know people who are like 20 years younger than him who aren't anywhere near as active. So I, I think that's kind of the, the key to it. And like in Clint's case, the guy, like I said, he's 88 years old. He's still walking around. He's still making movies. He's still Clint Eastwood. So I, I think that's just something important to keep in mind is if you retire, get something to do, even if it's just reading books, even if it's just studying. I, in Canada, at least, you could, I think if you're a senior, you can go to college for free. Um, you could just go and take courses or go and audit them, something like that. Go do that. That um, it, it keeps your mind busy and it prevents it from degenerating. It's also why I kind of criticize neat them because neat them really rots your brain. I mean... It, it's it's very hard for people to not have some kind of purpose in their life. Like I said, it doesn't have to be like you breaking rocks or something, but you need to have one. So that being said, let's let's talk about the movie. So this movie is The Mule, and I was really excited to go see this film. My dad really wanted to go see it, so we went and saw it together, which is nice. But uh, no, I, I liked the movie. I liked it a lot. Um, Clint still has it. Um, the man has a lot of talent and I have a lot of respect for him. Like I have a lot of respect for, for Sylvester Stallone because both Clint and Stallone are, are directors and, uh, actors. They'll, they'll direct and act in the same, in the movie that they're in and they're good movies. Like, so they, they're very talented people who are very dedicated to their art. Like, recently, uh, Creed 2 came out, and you know I really liked Creed 2. It's good to see these still putting out a quality product. It's, um, it's really touching. So, The Mule is the story of Earl Stone, who's a 90-year-old horticulturalist Korean War veteran. So he's estranged from his family and he kind of lives in a small farm where he tends to his flowers. So he kind of spent his entire life on the road, selling his flowers, traveling from place to place. He's very well respected in the community and in his field. By the way, this is based on a true story. The The actual story is pretty similar to the movie uh, from what, I, what research I did. It's a little different, but most of it's just kind of for making a coherent narrative. But anyways, he because he spent all this time away from his family, he he's kind of despised by them. Uh, he's estranged from his wife. His daughter won't speak to him. His granddaughter is the only person who likes him. Uh, his daughter hates him because he missed her wedding to go to a flower show. His wife hates him because he's a deadbeat, etc. So like the movie opens with him getting kicked out of his farm because it he, his house is foreclosed upon. He doesn't have any money anymore. 
So here he is, 90 years old. He doesn't have any cash. What is he going to do? So he goes to um, his daughter's wedding, or I guess her engagement party, and there's a Mexican there, and the Mexican guy's like, is it, you got a bunch of of stickers on your truck. Uh, that's not a very good fake Hispanic accent, but he's like, yeah, I drove all over the States. I drove to like 38 of them or something. I'm a really good driver. Never had a ticket, never had like even a parking ticket, never sped really good driver. And the Mexican guy is thinking, okay, we got this 90 year old white dude war vet. Let's get him to transport our Coke. So, Earl goes and he's just told to pick up a package and drive it from Texas up to the um, the the outskirts of Chicago and to leave it at a hotel, at a motel. So he does that. And kind of the funny thing is, and this is kind of a perspective you don't always get, is he has no act, no fear of death because he's 90 year old, 90 years old, and he knows he can die whenever. So he'll like tell off the the like the cartel member thugs and stuff like he just doesn't give a crap because he doesn't really care if they kill him. In, in some ways, it would solve his problems because it's not like he's going to go on and have like a lengthy future at this point. But yeah, so he runs his the first uh, drugs, and I think they give him like ten grand or something in cash. So he goes out and buys like a brand new Lincoln truck, and then he just kind of starts to get into it. And it's kind of a bit like of a Walter White story. It's kind of I, I don't know if it's necessarily a power trip, but it's about kind of a man who's been emasculated, kind of regaining his masculinity, regaining respect, regaining purpose. So he initially was only going to run one load of cocaine, but he just keeps running it. So he's able to pay for his daughter's wedding. He's able to pay for her to finish her school. There is a, um, I think, I'm not sure if it's a veterans association or something, but a, a community center that gets burnt out. He pays for it to be rebuilt. He's rebuilding stuff all over their like economically depressed town. He, he's kind of he's become someone again and he's kind of earning the gratitude of his family and so a lot of the movie is is just kind of that and it's 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 interesting because one of the core themes in it is him trying to get back into his family's graces because he kind of he says this to Bradley Cooper's character I've kind of wasted my life because my daughter and my family won't even talk to me um, and here I am 90 years old and I don't I don't have anything. I don't even have my flowers anymore. And that's kind of the ongoing thing is he's at this point, he's just trying to make money so he can leave it to his granddaughter and hope that she'll have a better life than he he did and that she won't make the same mistakes he has. So the movie is really kind of charming and funny. Um, he goes down south and meets the, the leader of the cartel. The, um, the Don in charge of it. They give him like a handler. The the, the initial Don actually, because he's an old man, so he'll just stop and buy like corn at the side of the road or stop to see a friend or something. And the, the cartels like really don't like it, but the Don's like, okay, well, that makes him really hard to track because his pattern's really irregular and he doesn't arrive at like the specified time. So eventually what winds up happening is the Don gets killed and his second in command takes over, who's a real hard ass. And he basically decrees that Earl has to um, just follow a very tight schedule. He can't stop. He can't do anything. He has to just take the, the cocaine to Chicago, and that's all he can do. While he's doing this, he gets a, a, a phone call that his ex-wife is dying, um, presumably of cancer, and he has to go to her. But if he leaves, then he knows that they'll kill him. So he goes to her and they reconcile. And it's a very touching scene. There's kind of a, a funny little moment where she's like, are you ever going to tell me where you got all the money? And he just explains exactly what he's been doing, that he's a drug mule. And she just laughs and it's like, I guess you're not going to tell me. So she has her funeral. Um, his daughter finally starts to talk to him. So he goes back to face the music. He goes back and he's like, look, if you guys want to kill me, I broke my word, whatever. So they agree to have him let him have one more run. And then they're going to kill him at the end of that, which they don't tell him, obviously. So meanwhile, Bradley Cooper and Lawrence Fishburne have managed to track him down. 
So as he's making his last run, uh, they succeed in capturing him and taking him to jail. And we have kind of a f- and his lawyer's like about to make some big defense. And he's like, no, oh, I did it. And he's like, are, are, you, are you sure you want to say that, sir? And he's like, yeah, I, I was a mule. Uh, I'm not going to pretend it wasn't me. It was 100% me. So they send him to jail. I think he only wound up serving in real life one year, one or two years, and then they released him. And then he died. So the, the IRL person is is dead at this point. But it's it's a really interesting story. I, th- I think something it touches on, and I don't know if this is a modern thing or, or an American thing or a Western thing in general, but compared to a lot of other societies, old people really aren't seen as like are, are not valued i guess in the same way they are in like east asia or some other parts of the world in in north america at least you almost have this attitude where once you hit like 60 you're just supposed to be kind of like it's almost kind of like logan's run there's this cult of youth uh once you pass like 30 years old your life is over it's a complete waste you've missed your chance to do everything good you can't be happy at all after like your 30 or whatever and then like aging is is viewed as an extremely negative thing and we don't really give old people much respect or anything like that and i don't think it's that way in most cultures so i don't know if that's just a modern thing if if that's a political thing etc because you always hear the oh the old people are conservative oh the old people are right wing and it's like that's supposed to be an insult. So, so I'm like, so what you're saying is maturity and experience make people have more conservative political views. Okay, and that's that's an insult. How? It's kind of like when they're like this random tribe in the middle of the Amazon that hasn't invented fire has no concept of God or the afterlife. Like, so you're saying religion is a product of civilization. How does that make your point exactly? But yeah, it's just, you can really kind of see that in this film. Uh, I don't like the term ageism, but just the kind of contempt that we hold elders in, in our society. And once again, I don't know if that's a political thing. I don't know if that's a modern thing. I don't know if that's like an American thing or if it's like that in Europe as well, but it's, it's interesting. And uh, I really liked the movie. I'd recommend watching it. And um, yeah, God bless.